Look, Minister, you relieved the concerns of many pensioners and families around the country last January when you announced uh, changes for those in receipt of reduced contributory pensions post-2012 due to some anomalies in the yearly averaging system. Um, I would like to get confirmation on behalf of those uh, due to be reviewed that the process as outlined last January is continuing and the timelines for the reviews later this year um, and adjusted payments early next year are on track. I'll be real brief. Um, thanks, Deputy, and thank you um, for all of the deputies that have uh, put down questions on this particular issue, because on the 23rd of January last, I was very pleased to be able to put a proposal to government and have them agree to it that would allow pensioners affected by the 2012 uh, rate changes in bans to have their pension entitlement calculated on what is going to be the new total cons approach basis, including a provision for up to 20 years of a new home caring credit. Legislation will have to be enacted to enable the implementation of these arrangements and a number of options regarding the best approach for myself to passing that legislation is currently being considered. In addition, a new information technology system has to be developed in line with the legislation and my department are currently working on both of those projects, Chairman, and they're at a very, very advanced stage. The next thing that we have to do um, is to design the procedures that we will work with the next couple of months. We are currently recruiting some temporary staff that will be the people that will actually do the reviews. Um, and then we're going to start um, carrying out, I suppose, the actions and the reviews. The department will be writing to the 67,000 impacted customers in the next coming weeks to explain to them what's happening and exactly how the process of review of work will be done. And as I stated previously, it still plans um, to commence these reviews and complete them hopefully by the end of the year, with the first payments being made in the first quarter of 2019, backdated where relevant to the end of March 2018, or later where a person attained their 66th birthday after the end of March 2018. And I think, just to be reassuring people if they are listening, it's not necessary for people to contact the department on the matter because once the legislation is passed and the systems are processed and are ready, the department will write again to the people impacted and provide them with the opportunity to have their pension um, recalculated. They will then have the opportunity, once they're presented with the recalculation, to decide whether they want to stay with their old pension payment or move to the new pension payment. And I've been asked on a number of occasions, Chair, whether there will be winners or losers in this particular uh, recalculation, as probably has happened on different occasions in the past. I can absolutely assure uh, the deputies and people listening that there will be no losers because anybody who gets recalculated and their payment is smaller than their current payment, well then obviously they will choose to stay on their current payment. But the anticipated outcome is, is that of the 67,000 people who are who were adversely affected, they will be affected positively by the recalculation and they will obviously move to the new positive payment. Oh, uh, Deputy Hayden. I'd like to thank the Minister for her response. Um, Minister, I'm glad to hear you reiterate the details of the plan, which were originally announced in January, um, are on track. You know, some of those affected um, have started to think that maybe it wasn't going to happen because they're not hearing about it in the media as much. And I suppose um, after many years of campaigning, they're nearly afraid that it, uh, to believe that the issue is finally going to be resolved once and for all. And I think great credit is due for you, due to you, not just for that announcement last January, the work that you and your officials have undertaken since um, to be in a position to undertake what is going to be a very significant review. Uh, and I welcome the fact that uh, you said those letters will issue in, in the next coming weeks. Um, as I know, you were very aware of the issue to cause upset and frustration and hardship for many affected uh, since 2012. Um, the payment of a weekly reduced pension reinforced that feeling that their work caring for families down through the years was unrecognised, and that's a really important step here. A couple of quick questions. Can you confirm that an allocation will be set aside as part of this year's budget then to make the necessary repayments uh, for next year? Um, you talk about 67,000. Is that the total amount of people in, uh, in receipt of contribu contributory pensions post-2012? Will people get letters uh, about the review who aren't um, you know, uh, covered uh, by it. Um, will the 67,000 all issue together or do you expect that to take a couple of weeks? I know it's a lot of letters but obviously there will be a lot of people. If some people get a letter and others we don't, how quick do you think it will be? Please, we must stick to the time. Deputy Moni, you were very cooperative in the first section with this. You are way under time. so. On the basis, we to go back again to everybody. We might keep it as yeah, no problem at all. I'll certainly be brief. Um, first of all, uh, I am I'm very pleased to be able to have the opportunity, um, Deputy Hayden, to be able to re reiterate. There is no delay. There is no change of anybody's mind or tactic. Um, we are in exactly the same position as I would have announced in this chamber a number of months ago. 
Um, Cabinet made the decision to change the anomaly. The legislation is well advanced, Deputy. Um, the only thing that needs to be made up our mind is whether we do it in the Social Welfare Bill or whether I do it as a standalone piece of legislation. And that's given the timelines of this particular House. It's not you know, to confuse or conflate anything. Um, I appreciate the, the, the comments, Deputy Hayden, but it, I just happened to be lucky that I was the Minister of Social Protection at a time when um, a large number of pensioners um, decided to mobilise over the years since 2012 when they had been affected by something that was unfair, unjust and discriminatory. And I want to pay particular tribute to those pensioners who were persistent in coming to all of our clinics on a weekly basis and indeed Age Action Ireland um, for the coordination of that campaign that they did. Um, but I am happy to say that this is one of um, a number of instances where people have shouted loudly and that government has heard and we are able to um, obviously allocate the money, number one, in the budget. Number two, the 67,000 people are the full amount. Deputy, to answer your question, sorry Deputy Durkin, I think it was you, um, not all of them obviously are in Ireland, some 9,000 of those people live outside of the Republic of Ireland. They will all be contacted in the coming weeks, well in advance of Christmas because I would hope and assume that the assessments will be done by then. To answer your question about the temporary staff, um, I'd say they will be all in place by the end of next week, then they will go into training and then the letters will go out and the assessments will start. I have absolutely no intentions of being here at the beginning of next year and not have, by the end of quarter one, every single one of those 67,000 people who have or chose to move to a new um, increased payment will have received their backlog, um, their little lump sum, and be on that new payment by the end of quarter one next Thank year. Thank you very much. I hope that answers. Back to Deputy Hayden. Again, I'd ask the deputies to be as brief as possible. Yes, Cahirlock, and uh, thank the Minister for, uh, for that reply. You're absolutely right. The pensioners that I dealt with in Kildare were very uh, persistent, um, and you know, rightly so. The ones that contacted me, you know, the unfairness of it, I, I, it's one of those few times you're sitting in clinics when people are coming to you with a case, and you can't argue back with them because there was an inherent unfairness in it, uh, and it really cut to the bone of people because it felt their contributions uh, to, to the state down through the years was being questioned, and the role that they've played through, through their life and the choices they made in those lives. Um, so I welcome that. I welcome uh, confirmation that the 67,000 letters will go out probably as closely together as possible because you know when some start getting the letters and others don't if there's a three or four week gap between that that'll cause consternation so as close together as possible uh, notwithstanding what a big undertaking it is. I will just ask one other point if any consideration could be given to the fact that you know one of the big bugbears for these people has been when they hear in recent years of a fiver increase in the pension that they would then go on to the post office to get their pension and it wouldn't be a fiver because they were on a reduced amount that maybe consideration might be given in this budget that if there was to be an increase the full amount could be given to everybody because uh, obviously that is an anomaly that, that has driven home the in inequality of the system thank up until to date. Thank you. Deputy Moynihan. So Minister, you have good books all around. Final comment from you. Finally, Chair, um, I just wanted to temper um, so that there isn't an unfair expectation given. 67,000 letters are not going to go out on one day because we haven't taken on board 15,000 people, temporary staff, to do this. They're going to go out over a number of weeks. And so the only thing I can ask you is for your assistance that if one of your constituents get a letter and another one doesn't for a couple of weeks to reassure them that the letters are coming. But genuinely, we had to uh, assess and address this, that this was a fixing of an anomaly, um, but it has to come out of the current staffing funds that we will have for this year. We've managed to be able to secure through some savings money for temporary staff, but there's not a huge amount of temporary staff. There's enough for us to be able to do the reviews, to send out the letters, to do and complete the reviews, to stick to the timelines that we set out, Deputy Moynihan, is that by quarter one of next year, every single one of the 67,000 people who were affected um, that will get an increase in their payments will receive their little backlog um, and then go on to their new payments before the end of quarter one. Nothing has changed. Timelines haven't slipped. It makes no difference whatsoever to the timelines as to whether we include this piece of legislation as an amendment in the Social Welfare Bill or have it as a standalone bill. It just might be easier to have it as a standalone bill, but we're working that out. But it will in no way impact on the dates for the final payments, or indeed the first payments. But this will be done over a phased period yeah. um, because it's a tremendous amount of people and yeah. the staff in our department obviously are great, but they're not, they're not wonder women and men. And Deputy Durkin, to finally answer your question, because of the common travel area agreements that we have um, and the recip re reciprocal arrangements that we have between ourselves and the United Kingdom particularly, 
Um, the arrangements would be no different for people who live outside of the uh, um, Republic of Ireland than those who live in. What we want to do is to give people the fullest payment that they possibly can from the contributions that they made, either in Ireland or any of our reciprocal uh, states. Can I, can I just... Uh...